Hey there, happy day. Sharon Horn Elstrom here. Your PR set up for success. We are doing a daily life lesson as we prepare and get ready for the next 30 day get up and go challenge during COVID-19, all the craziness during the pandemic. And when I first learned we were going to be shut down, I was like, okay, what the heck am I going to do? What am I going to do to keep myself going in a positive way through this month long shutdown? Now that was just after we'd been shut down for two weeks in, in my home state of Wisconsin. And we found out that our governor had said, hey, we're going to be shut down for the entire month of April. Now, I was lucky because I got to hang out with my amazing little four-year-old granddaughter. She's now turned five and started school. But then she was four and her energy and her love and her light and her fun had made the pandemic actually pretty okay for me and, and a benefit for me because I did get to hang out with her so that her folks could still do their thing and work and things. But I knew I didn't want to get really, really complacent because although it was just going to be a month, which seemed horrible at the time, we're like, oh my God, how are we going to be locked down or shut down for a whole month after even just two weeks? I and everybody I know was starting to go a little bit stir crazy. So I decided I needed to challenge myself to do something positive with the time that I had because I was already doing things online. But a lot of people, a lot of the people that I work with and I interact with every day were freaking out because their jobs were gone, you know, including my family members. Jobs were immediately, they just evaporated. The people couldn't go to work. And so people that I love and care about just were, were, were massively being impacted and changed, you know, in just such a short period of time. It was a matter of days when we went from, you know, life as we knew it, doing whatever we wanted, when we wanted, pretty much where we wanted, to boom. You're, you're home, you're, you're home, you're home with your kids in many situations. You're not going to work, guess what? Your income's gone too, by the way. All kinds of craziness. So in order for me to handle it in a positive way, I thought, well, I'm gonna do a challenge because challenges are kind of my jam. And I might as well bring people along with me. So I did the first 30 day get up go challenge in April. Then I did it again. I was challenged by a group of entrepreneurs to do it again for 40 days from June into July. And then I took a little breather, shared lessons like this, little lessons learned for a while in between doing it again in the month of August. And now September, we're doing the little breather and just I'm sharing lessons learned every day as set up for success. Um, things that it's taken me sometimes decades to figure out. I want to share tips and tricks and secrets with you. And today's is all about PR and it's not PR in the um, public relations way. It's PR meaning personal responsibility. I'm going to show you a trick that I use to help me take personal responsibility and to help me get over stuff that might be positively or negatively impacting me, how to build on the positive and, and get rid of and let go of the negative. So <clears throat> that's why we're getting ready to do this next 30 day get up and go challenge in October. Since we're still in the pandemic, believe it or not, we're still being impacted. And depending on where you're located, the rules and the regulations are a little bit different for each and every one of us, right? Like here in Wisconsin, we are a mask state. So whenever we go out in public into a business or establishment, you know, I don't wear a mask when I go for walks out in nature. Uh, but if I go anywhere or in any business or into a place, even in or out of a restaurant, restaurants are partially open in our area. Uh, ben, I haven't been to really, I'm trying to think if I've been to any. Yep, I went to Carboni's for pizza sandwiches and my mom and my sister and my daughter and I were the only four people in the entire restaurant. <laughs> and that's two for Tuesday pizza sandwich. Day. So that was interesting. Uh, but we're a mask state. In, in some states, they don't have to wear masks. In other states, you have to wear masks all the time. Um, you know, you see people riding around in their car with their masks on and they're the only one in the car. And I don't know that there's any regulations that say you need to wear a mask in your car when you're by yourself, but you know, whatever people are being careful. And if it's like me back in the days when I wore my, my hard hat and my helmet and my, my hair nets, half the time I drive home in it. Cause I was so used to having it on my head. I'd forget that I had it on and I'd be getting funny looks. And then I'd finally notice I'm like, Oh, I still have my hair net, and my hat and helmet on. So then I would take it off and I'd laugh at myself because I still had it on. I'm sure it's probably the same thing with the masks. So let's talk for a couple of minutes about personal responsibility. What the heck is personal responsibility and why do I believe that that is one of the biggest lessons that each and every one of us need to learn on the planet in order to be good, positive, contributing human beings to society? Well, personal responsibility, as much as we like to 
try to shirk it or not be responsible for ourselves, guess what? We are the only one that is responsible for ourselves. We, each and every one of us, are responsible, and we're not just 10% responsible or 50% responsible like we think we are in relationships. We are 100% responsible for everything we think, everything we feel, everything we do, everything we say, everything we eat. Eating is doing, right? Everything. And guess what? That means we are 100% responsible for the results and the consequences of everything we think, say, feel, believe, do, right? We are. And, uh, you know, I mean, the law will tell us we're 100% responsible, except for in certain political situations. But otherwise, <laughs> we are responsible. We have to expect that everything we do and say and think and feel is going to create a result or a consequence. And if the consequence is in our favor, you know, and it doesn't hurt other people, great. If it's not in our favor and it does harm other people, we're going to be held accountable for those consequences. If you cause damage or hurt another person in some way, you're going to be held accountable for that. You're going to have to pay the price for doing that thing, saying that thing, being that way. You know, if you're a bully and you go around bullying people, don't be surprised when you get called out and have to make reparations for being a bully, for being a bad person, um, <clears throat> or for the things that you say and do. And it, it doesn't matter what your excuses are or what's happened to you in the past that's made you a bully. If you're a bully, you're going to be held accountable for being a bully. Now, not always, but you're going to be at some point, at, at some point in time. It might not be in the current situation that you're in, but we all pay ultimately for who we are and what we've done and how we behave in, in positive and negative ways. And depending on what your beliefs are, what, what the ramifications and the costs are of that will be different for each and every one of us. I'm not here to give a lecture on, you know, you better be good or you're going to hell because, you know, I, I don't necessarily believe that and other people don't either. I think that we want to do the, the best we can given what we've got at any given time. So, I was thinking today and, and I woke up in the last couple of days, I don't know if there's something in the air or what, but a lot of people I know are just going through this funky, weird time. We're just feeling a little weird and off. And so today I woke up and I was thinking about all kinds of just junk and I call it junk, anything negative or heavy or weird or that bothers me. If it bothers me, it's a negative feeling. I call that junk. And I was thinking about, well, how do I handle this stuff? Because I, you know how your brain will start going in circles <clears throat> and if you're thinking about positive things you can go in an upward spiral in a positive circle if you're thinking about or feeling negative things you can go very rapidly very very rapidly into a negative or downward spiral so I was reminded <clears throat> about a little strategy that I came up with I don't even remember when I started doing it but a long time ago um, uh, over over a lot of years after my sudden cardiac arrest, I did a lot of personal development reading and research and studying and I studied different modalities and things and I'm like, all right, this is all well and good and awesome, but you know, a lot of it is just way too freaking complicated for me. I need to have something simple that I will actually do. I mean, very direct and to the point person. I'm like, this is a problem. I want this solution. What's the fastest, easiest way I can get from here to there? What is the fastest way I can stop feeling bad about this stuff? So I did, I did like a seven or eight part series on letting go strategies, getting over feelings or getting over situations and experiences from the past that were still bothering me. And one of them, you know, and you can do that with limiting beliefs. You can do that with anything. So um, one of the ones I remember doing was the belief because me, I, I thought I was the only one that felt this way, but it turns out there are millions and millions of people that feel this way um, at the at back of the time. And it's still pops up and rears its ugly head, the I'm not good enough or I don't deserve. So I did all these letting go strategies on I'm not good at enough. And it was pretty, it was actually fun. I spent a whole day just finding different ways to let go of that nonsense, ridiculous, limiting belief that I am not enough or I'm not enough. And I did things like I wrote it on toilet paper and flushed it down the toilet. I um, wrote it on a rock and threw it into the river. I, um, what else did I do? I did a whole bunch of, I put it on a mirror. I wrote it on a mirror in, in marker and then I foamed it off and rubbed it off. I, I actually put it on post-it notes and I, I threw them in a little bucket and lit them on fire in back of my business. That was my favorite, I think. But another thing I learned to do was, <clears throat> and you can do this physically 
and I, I'll do it physically when I'm more upset or I'm more invested in a negative emotion or a negative or a positive thing um, when I want to feel a certain way. So like this morning, I woke up and I just did this in my mind. I did it while I was still laying in bed before I even got out of bed because I wanted to change my attitude and change my state before I even got up. I didn't want to start my day feeling heavy and frustrated and negative or upset about anything. I never wanted to get out of bed feeling that way. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do my, I call it the black bag exercise. And what I do is in my mind, I imagine all the negative thoughts and feelings that I'm having. I imagine myself putting them in a black bag. Now, I've actually got a black bag that I do this with sometimes. Sometimes if something's really bothering me or I find that I'm really upset about it, again, I will take a piece of paper or post-it notes or something like this. These are actually official post-it notes. And I will write it out on these things. I will write what's bothering me and I will put it in this black bag. And the reason I put it in a black bag it's because the color black is the color of absorption. The color black absorbs all other spectrums of light, right? So it absorbs all of those negative feelings, all of that nonsense, all that stuff I don't want in me. I don't want it in my head. I don't want to store it in my body. I don't want it at all. I'll put it in the bag. And if I do it in my imagination, the bag just automatically disintegrates whatever I put in that bag. So if I'm feeling... Uh, what was I I'm trying to think what I was I just I was feeling funky this morning because the last few days I felt funky and weird and I'm like I don't want to be worried or stressed out or thinking that there's anything wrong with me or anybody else I love and care about so I'll just put that in the bag and then let it be absorbed but sometimes if it's really bothering me if I get out of bed and it's still bothering me I will go find a bag the black bag literally I'll write it on a post-it note and I'll stuff it in that bag now sometimes I will cheat and if I, if I still feel any semblance of it's bothering me, I will take those post-it notes out and I will burn them in a bucket or I will tear them up in little pieces and throw them in the garbage can outside. But I'll do something to actually eliminate them and get them out of the black bag when I physically do it. If I'm mentally doing it, the bag just automatically works its magic and they disappear. So that's the black bag strategy. That gets rid of any negative feelings, emotions, thoughts, fears, doubts, worries, uh, <coughs> challenges that I might be facing that I want to make sure I'm facing in a positive way. So I want to get rid of all the, the, I'm not good enough, I don't deserve all that negative nonsense and energy by putting it in the black bag. Now, what do I do when I want to increase my confidence, when I want to increase and blow up experiences or things that I've had from the past that were good, but I want to expand them out and I want to blow them up in a good way. Well, that's when I use either a white bag or a crystal clear magic bag. And in my imagination, I can make the bag look any way I want. So mine is usually sparkly, filled with diamonds and, and shiny, glittery objects, right? The outside of my bag. And what I'll do with that is I'll take any thought, any feeling, any experience that I want to feel more of, that I want to expand and grow, and I'll put those in my white bag. Now, sometimes there's things that I want to really experience. And so I have a clear bag. And why do I have a clear or white bag or a crystally shiny, sparkly bag? Because that feels good to me. But I have a white bag because white is the reflection of all other colors in the rainbow, all the other colors in the spectrum, right? right white reflects everything out. So it expands it, it multiplies it, it makes it bigger. And that's what I want to do with the feelings that feel good to me. So I have a clear bag and again, both positive and negative. I want to really blow up an experience and build my confidence before I do a presentation or a video or a speech or something. I will, if, or if I'm going to teach a course or any, have an event, I want to really build up based on my past experiences in a positive way, things that have gone really well for me. Then I will, in my imagination, put them in the white bag or the crystal diamond sparkly bag. Um, and if I want to really, in a physical way, manifest that, I'll do it on the the post-it notes or the piece of paper in my little bag. Now those, I do not burn up. I do not throw away. I actually keep those in a file folder in my office it, along with um, positive feedback, positive messages, um, letters and things from people that have um, testimonials. Hello, they're called testimonials, things like that. I keep all that and I keep it in my, I have a, actually I have a whole file drawer now, but I used to just have a file folder where I would just put things that made me feel good, right? You know, letters of recommendation, things like that, that I had gotten from past jobs, past bosses, past whatever, anything that made me feel good. You know, sometimes some cartoons that some of my old employees gave me that were freaking hilarious, those went in the file. So anything that makes me feel good, positive, 
or expansive, more confident, more capable, more able to do and create what I want in the world, that goes in the white file or the white folder or the white bag or the whatever your bag looks like. So that is my actual trick and, and strategy that I use whenever I want to change how I'm feeling about something. Because guess what? When I am feeling confident, when I'm feeling good, I don't have any trouble taking 100% personal responsibility for anything that I do and say and be and feel and how I act. Uh, when we're feeling it's a, it's a little bit more tempting to, to make excuses, right? And excuses or blame or... Uh, and, and here's the thing with, with excuses and blame. We can make excuses that other people will buy, you know, that other people will buy into and say, oh, I totally get it. I understand that you're busy. We're all busy, right? Uh, but we know if we're not doing our best, if we're not giving our all, if we're not showing up and, and taking responsibility for our life and for the things that happen in our life and for how we feel and think and be and behave in any given situation. So that's our topic for today, personal responsibility. I would love to know how do you feel about personal responsibility? You know, like everybody else, we're all human. And I know, I'm sure in my past, there have been times when I've passed the buck, assessed blame, made excuses for not doing something in a timely manner or made excuses for not wanting to do something or, or behaved in a, a less than 100% kind and caring and wonderful way. I mean, we've all been bitchy sometimes. Um, so love to know your experience with this how how willing are you to just say yeah I got this this is my life I'm gonna create it I am 100% responsible for it what happens in it yeah good stuff's gonna happen bad stuff's gonna happen I'm gonna deal with it and figure it out curious you know maybe below hey how are you feeling right now about personal responsibility you know sometimes we're feeling 80% sometimes we're feeling 20% sometimes we're feeling 100% and it's not a problem um, but with COVID and all that's going on, sometimes we just want to check in with ourselves and say, hey, how am I doing with this? How am I feeling? And then if you need to feel better, I say use the white bag exercise. If you need to, to get rid of some junk that's just weighing you down, use the black bag exercise. All right. Have an awesome, amazing day. I will be with you tomorrow with another interesting life lesson from my many decades here on the planet. Have a great day.